So good day, dear students. Today we are going to talk about uh, load bearing structures of buildings and structures. So um, when we start talking about bearing constructions, actually we need to say that uh, they are, was designed to carry out uh, the constant loads, uh, climatic loads, um, any additional loads, and uh, transfer uh, it to the foundation. So it's a main um, load bearing frame of the structure. I call it like a bearing skeleton or bearing structure. So roof construction, longitudinal walls are generally supported by the uh, columns, by the fasteners. So uh, gable walls receive support from the uh, gable column. Uh, gable columns. Cross uh, skeletal connection uh, typically include walls um, with the solid frames, uh, lattice beams, and so on. So, if necessary, the standard loading um, standard load loading bearing frame are supplemented by beams of the runway, um, intermediate floors, etc. The uh, supporting uh, structure differ uh, from the frame structure in uh, the elements are uh, responsible for the transmission bearing uh, of uh, the subsoil load. So load bearing elements are walls in the loan bearing structures, the frame structures, the columns and beams. So the most of all topic of our discussion today will be about beams. And on next on next lectures, we'll continue uh, speaking about other main constructions. But before we will start, let's um, uh, the quick uh, look um, on the superstructure and the substructure. So, um, generally, the superstructure of the building is where people um, spend most of their time. So, this area includes the first, second floor uh, inside a home or any number of floors in a large building. So, the uh, superstructure includes um, beams includes uh, columns, finishes, windows, doors, roofs, floors, and um, actually anything else. So um, the parts of superstructure are much lengthier than the part of the super, uh, substructure. So this uh, shouldn't be uh, surprising since the superstructure is much larger than the substructure. So uh, a superstructure differs from the uh, substructure of the building. So the substructure refers all the structural element um, elements below ground level. So we are able to uh, design all the foundations and uh, the uh, basement of the building. So um, we ensure uh, that um, uh, we use um, matching materials so that the overall look to fill the whole building are uh, perfect of uh, that people who include into the construction. So, and um, here are some important uh, elements of superstructure. So, when we uh, already start to construct the superstructure in the part of the structure, so that above the plinth level. So, in generally, um, the columns and walls can. Um, can be constructed in uh, the superstructure. So there are several important parts um, and uh, 
we'll actually I told you about them and uh, we'll, we'll discuss about each of them separately. Substructure. So uh, the substructure of uh, the building is the most uh, wall and uh, um, to easy understand what is it. It's uh, all what located below uh, or beneath the earth. So the uh, purpose of the substructure of the building is to transfer the loads uh, from the superstructure to the soil is underneath. That's an uh, important thing. And so will be uh, beneath part uh, will be substructure sufficiently enough and strong and uh, hard to accept all loads and transfer it without any uh, supplements, without any deflections, uh, is depend on the way of uh, the design, type of material, and so on. So uh, this is why substructure is right against the soil that support it. So now it is um, important that um, you will uh, spend time on our practical lesson. So working with the um, working like structural engineer uh, and uh, ensure that all elements of uh, the building you have uh, choose for yourself. So will support by uh, the beams, columns, foundations, wall. Um, and uh, they uh, will incorporate uh, incorporate it properly, ensure that nothing will uh, collapse within the substructure. So it will depend on the right calculation, the right design. So uh, most of all, um, substru substructure is made from the plain cement concrete or reinforced concrete cement. So uh, once that uh, in clay stone, bricks or additional concrete is added until it uh, all reaches in the um, plains level. So it's a necessary from uh, a damp uh, proof course to be laid on the top. So that uh, in that case, moisture uh, does not penetrate any part in the substructure. So uh, to uh, protect uh, beneath part of the building uh, from the moisture, we need to uh, protect uh, enclosing part of substructure by using the um, special uh, protecting element from the penetration. And about them, we also will be talking um, on our um, subjects. So, uh, and the brief information about the uh, difference between the superstructure and uh, the substructure of the building. So for uh, the reason that we need to more deeply understand the main differences between them and to, to compare them, during your talking or during your speaking and so on. So um, you can probably see the difference actually uh, between the superstructure and the substructure of the building. To make sure we have, um, we're talking uh, some uh, handy recap below. So let's talk about this. So substructure of the building. So the substructure, uh, is that below the damp roof course includes the ground floor and the foundation. So this is a structure located below the things. Uh, this is structure transfer the loads uh, and receive uh, the loads from the superstructure and the transfer it to, uh, to the foundation. Um, this substructure includes the foundation 
peers and apartment actually in various uh, combinations, various configurations. So in buildings, for example, include foundation, in some structures like bridges, uh, include the piers and apartments. Uh, superstructure. So uh, superstructure, uh, the internal and the external elements of the building that cover the substructure. So external and internal, for example, external walls. External walls are uh, protect the building from the uh, open nature. So from the minus degrees, from the climate, and the so on. So internal part like partitions, for example, and also internal walls, which are um, divide the internal premises, the rooms, uh, and the create the uh, ready, for example, flats. Yes, if the building, for, uh, for instance, residential. So the structure, uh, the superstructure uh, from uh, top of the planes and the top of the building. So I mean the top of the roof or covering. It's called uh, superstructure. So um, superstructure uh, transfer the loads from the upper part to the building uh, of the building to the substructure. The structure above the bearing and, and the bearing surface includes uh, the main uh, bearing elements like walls, columns, beams, uh, slabs, coverings, roofs, and so on, and non bearing constructions like partitions, um, openings like windows and the doors, lintels and the so on. Okay, so uh, let's talk about, uh, let's start talking about the beams. So uh, beams uh, in general uh, is the um, one of the main construction in the building and uh, it can be made from the various uh, materials um, historically beams were squared timbers because uh, in the ancient time uh, when there are no um, materials developed uh, and uh, invented like concrete steel and uh, fabric materials and so on, there was only timbers so, uh, and the actually stone. Yes? So uh, the natural stone and the beams was uh, one of the first materials I used for timber uh, structures. Um, but nowadays I uh, used the metal uh, timber um, combinations of uh, wood and the metal uh, beams actually primarily carry the uh, vertical uh, gravi uh, uh, gravitational forces. They are uh, also used to carry out the um, horizontal loads. So uh, loads, horizontal loads, not only statical loads, but also uh, dynamical loads, like earthquakes, um, some um, maybe blows, wind or tension um, and uh, to resist the uh, raptor truss as a tight beam, so usually compression or color beam. So the loads carried uh, by beam uh, trans uh, transferred to the columns, directly transferred, because the columns are um, mostly support the beam. So they are supporting elements for the beam. Also beams can transfer uh, their load to the walls, directly to the walls, or guiders, uh, which then transfer uh, forces uh, to the structural uh, compressional mass. So, and uh, eventually to the ground. So in light 
uh, frame constructions, joist uh, may uh, rest on the beams. So uh, as you see on, on the picture in the left part of your screen, you can find the various numbers of the sections um, of the steel and reinforcement sections. Oh, actually, one of uh, the uh, most popular type of the sections, like uh, white flange, T-beam, I-beam, uh, uh, angle uh, beams, and so on. And also according to the shape of reinforcement contraction, like uh, circle, rectangular, triangular shape, and so on, square shape, and uh, many other shapes. And in the right part, you see the uh, location uh, in the real object uh, of the um, in two di directions, cross sectional direction, longitudinal direction, and how located beams and how located uh, joints according to the uh, each other and according to um, the contractional scheme of the building. Next one um, is uh, RCC. So RCC is the one of the popular beams in the contraction side. It is reinforced um, concrete beams. So you know that one of the popular type of, uh, of the building in our country is, and not only actually in our country and also abroad. So one of the popular is the reinforcement uh, concrete constructions. And so reinforcement concrete beam some um, structural element that designed to carry uh, transverse external loads. So load, loads, uh, force, bending moment, shear forces, and the some, in, uh, in some cases, um, torsion across uh, their lens. Uh, moreover, the uh, concrete is strong in compression and the very, very weak intention. So we need to understand it. In compression, it shows the good and best results, but intention not so. So thus, uh, the steel reinforcement are used to take up tensile strengths in the reinforcement concrete beams. So uh, furthermore, uh, beams uh, support the load from the slab other beams, uh, walls, and the columns. So they transfer the load to the columns, supporting them. And additionally, beams can be uh, simply supported, uh, can be continuous, but we will talk about later continuous, cantilever, and cantilever. So they can be uh, designed in various shapes, um, what you see in the previous uh, screen slide, square, T-shaped, L-shaped, rectangular, circle, and so on. So beams can be a single reinforcement and the double reinforcement. So uh, the later I use in depth of the beam is uh, restricted. Uh, let's see the uh, types um, of the beams. So what I told you, uh, in engineering in construction, uh, beams um, are of uh, several types. So first of all, it is the um, simply supported beam. So uh, simply supported beam is the beam uh, supported on the ends, which are uh, free to rotate and have no moment resistance. Uh, fixed beam, beam supported on both of ends and restrain it from the rotation. Restrain it from the rotation. Um, next one is uh, cantilever beams. Cantilever beams um, is projected beam 
fix it only in one end. Fix it only in one end. Next one, it is continuous beams. So uh, continuous beam, a beam extending over more than two supports. Over more than two supports. Uh, next one, uh, overhang, overhanging. So uh, overhanging a simple beam extended beyond its supports uh, in one end. And also there can be found the uh, double uh, overhanging. So double overhanging is a simple beam with the both ends extending beyond its supports in the both ends. Uh, also, tricet beam, uh, tricet beam. So uh, a beam, actually traditional beam, strengthened by adding the cable or the road to uh, a form of a truss. So it's strengthened by some additional element. So strengthened or reinforced. So beam on a spring support, beam on elastic foundation. So as you see, there are many variants, many um, examples of the beam. Let's start uh, talking about the first uh, about the first uh, type of the beam. Uh, so a simply supported beam. So a simply supported beam. Um, it, it is a beam that uh, simply um, concreted beam, uh, and uh, uh, it refers to beam uh, which are having a single span single span supported at the ends without restraint at the support. So simple beam is sometimes uh, called uh, simply supported beam. So restraint in this case means a rigid connection or uh, encourage at the support. So, uh, like you see on the screen, there are several examples of simply supported beam. So simply supported beam uh, have no resistance from the rotating. So rotating can be found when there are, uh, for example, an uh, um, non-centrically uh, concentrated load. And so there are, can be found some uh, moment which can create the rotation. Next one. So, um, next one is the uh, beam that rests on more than two supports. So, it can be um, actually single beam provided for a long span between columns or walls. Uh, with intermediate support or small beams uh, or single continuous beams for entire length of the structure with the uh, intermediate column or wall support. So this variant of the beams can be found in the uh, uh, prefabricated constructions. So not monolithic but prefabricated. When there are Walls are made from the masonry. Um, masonry, uh, it is wall which um, gather it from the little pieces, constructional pieces like bricks, blocks, natural uh, bricks, or artificial materials, and so on. And there are um, supported uh, beams are supported on this wall by the uh, requirement lens. So that lens in the prefabricated, uh, or for example, in the uh, panel buildings, not more, uh, not less than 120 millimeters. So the thickness of the supporting uh, wall um, on the place of supporting should be not less than 120 millimeters.
next one. So uh, a fixed beam. So a fixed beam uh, is a beam uh, with one um, is one with the ends restrained from the rotation. So uh, in reality, a beam's ends are never completely fixed. So they uh, as they are uh, often modeled for simplicity. However, they can actually easy um, be restrained enough relative to the stiffness of the beam and the column to be consider it fixed. Next one. Uh, next one. So uh, uh, a beam uh, which are um, restrained by the two ends is uh, uh, by the one end actually um, call it like cantilever beam. So a uh, cantilever beam uh, is a rigid uh, structural uh, element that extends horizontally and uh, supported only um, on the one end. So typically it's uh, extend, um, sorry, um, from uh, a flat vertic uh, a flat vertical surface such as a wall so to which uh, it must be firmly attached so like other structural elements a cantilever uh, can um, form it as a beam uh, plate stress and the slab so when uh, subjected to a structural load uh, at its far and supported end, the uh, cantilever carries a load to the support. So where it applies the shear stress and bending moment. So cantilever constructions allow uh, the overhanging structures without traditional support. Temporary um, cantilevers are often used in construction. So the particular structure, uh, constructed structures creates a cantilever, but the um, completed structure does not act as a cantilever. So this is um, very helpful when temporary supports uh, or false work cannot be used to support the structure while it's being built. Um, and and the last uh, one is uh, over overhanging beam. Overhanging beam um, is define it as, as a beam that has uh, one or both ends stretched out parts uh, of its supports. So it can have a number of supports. In other words, it, um, it is a beam uh, when a cantilever portion is handing out of a simply supported beam. And uh, let's talk about um, a singly reinforced beam and uh, doubly reinforced beam. So singly reinforced beam, uh, it is beam that in longitudinally reinforced only on the uh, tension zone. So it's no like single re reinforced beam. In such beams, um, the uh, ultimate bending moment at the tension, so due to bending, uh, are carried by the reinforcement, while the compression is carried by the concrete. Particularly, it's, uh, it is possible to provide reinforcement 
on the tension zone because we need to tie this three wraps. So there are four, two rebars are uh, utilized the compression zone um, to tie the three wraps and the rebars act as false members just for holding the strips. And the double reinforced beam. So it is beam um, that reinforced with the steel both in tension and in compression zone. So in the top part in the, and in the bottom part of the um, And call it like double reinforced beam. So this is type of beam mainly provide when the depth of the beam is restricted. So if beam uh, with the limited depth is reinforced on, um, on the tension side only, so it might not have sufficient restraints to oppose the bending moment. So um, the moment resistance cannot be increased by increasing the amount of steel only in the tension zone. So it can be increased, um, uh, it can be increased um, making the beam over reinforced, but not more uh, than 25% on th uh, strained side. Thus a double reinforced beam is provided to increase the moment of resistance of uh, beam can be uh, utilized under the following conditions. So when the outside uh, of the uh, alternating, uh, that means um, the load is acting to the face of the member. So the load is eccentric and eccentricity of the load is changing from one side to another side um, due to axis. So uh, the member is subjected a shock or impact or um, accidental or lateral problems, uh, the rest. So importance of um, applying the right number of the reinforcement is actually uh, lays on the uh, engineers, on the um, designs, on the project managers who are included uh, into the design, into the construction, into the right accepting the uh, reinforcement concrete materials. So um, we actually have some uh, minutes and if you maybe have some questions, I will be um, glad and uh, ready to answer all of them. They can be like in English and uh, so both in Russian. Okay, so if you uh, have no questions, thank you uh, very much for our lecture.